Hey guys, Chris from Hockey Tutorial here, and today in this video, we're gonna be taking a look at the ultimate source game comparison. So what we've done is gone ahead and collected all of the most popular source games that are out there. Some of these are only available in North America, some of these are available worldwide. What we wanted to do is essentially create a comparison video where we explain the differences between these game systems because at a glance, or if you look at them online or look at people playing with them online, they can all look very, very similar. But there are a lot of differences between them, and these differences really do affect the enjoyment that you're able to get out of each of these games and also how dynamic the actual playing style of the games are. You wouldn't think that there's a lot of ways to play a source game, but as we break down this video, you'll see that there is a big difference between these different game systems and how you actually play them. To film this video, we've come down to an abandoned army base here in the UK. A little bit of a strange and honestly a little bit of a creepy place to be, but we thought it would make a really interesting backdrop and a pretty sick place to store some biscuits. Let's jump into this video, head over to Tommy and JJ who are downstairs, and see what they think about the differences between these different source games. So what, what do you notice about all of the nets? What, what is the difference between all of them? Just, just off, oh, off well, they're the all branded. They've all got their own logo on the front. But the, you know, the, the canvas of the, the whole item is identical. It's just been branded with each other's. Let me have a 360. We're just here to test these. <laughs> We're not here to notice the difference. Hold those to affix the board. That one's not. That one's fixed to the board. That mean about the size of a shoe do this? Discuss that. Like I said, I quite like this one. I think this one's just a little bit different to these ones. Where it's got the mini goal and the bigger goal. And obviously it's not got a ramp. Hasn't got a ramp, guys. Just yeah, yeah, hasn't just, got a ramp. So good, Sceptre. <laughs> yeah. All right, see, we'll test them out. All right, fine. Are you guys going to do the thing downstairs? Thank you very much for the uh, <laughs> terrible help. <laughs> guys, <I'm trying. laughs> Now starting off with the three pads on my left over here because these are the ones that have the most similarities between them. If we look at the different nets that they're using, they're essentially puck catchers. We can see that they all have ramps, they all have similar straps, basically the same parts, the same construction, uh, but they have different logos and different color schemes on the netting and also on the ramps themselves. If we start off over here, the source kit was one of the first games that we ever came across of this nature. And over time, they've made different changes, different adjustments to improve the way that the game plays and to improve the experience that you have with them. One of the ones that I really appreciate is the fact that they've attached the actual net, the ramp, and the shooting pad together, which means that when you're shooting pucks, which are real NHL pucks, or if you're using the plastic ones that come provided, you don't have to worry about the actual game shifting around, moving around, which made it quite annoying to play. And that was one of the things that we touched on in the first ever video that we covered when we looked at Source Kit a few years ago. Now, the actual shooting pad itself is a great size for you to be able to stick handle off and for you to be able to position the pucks. It has everything that you need to be able to play this game, regardless of what surface you're on. If it's a hard surface that we're on right now, or if you're playing on the beach in sand, or if you're playing on grass. This setup over here works really well. The size, the dimensions, and also the thickness of the shooting pad make it easy to play on a variety of different surfaces. It's not too thin, and it's not too thick. It also has a handle on the actual shooting pad itself, so you're able to move the game around, making it quite portable and easy to carry with you. Now, when we move on to the Hockey Shot Source game over here, again, similar thing over here, but one of the things that we have to note, aside from the net and the ramp, all of this being exactly the same as the previous one, minus the logo and the color scheme, it's the shooting pad on this one. Although it does have holes that are drilled or pre-installed um, on the actual shooting pad surface itself, there was nothing inside the packaging to attach the puck catcher onto the shooting pad itself. I don't really know what that means, I don't really know why they've done that, but this is exactly how it came shipped out to us when we ordered this online, so it's worth mentioning. Uh, the holes also don't actually match up to the net or the puck catcher itself. There is an additional smaller hole next to the larger holes, which looks like they do match up to the holes at the base of the puck catcher, but again, nothing was provided to attach them together, so I don't really know why they've done that. When we look at the actual shooting pad that they've attached, although it is a little bit bigger than the one from Source Kit, it's also thinner. And straight out of the packet, you can see that even though it's on a flat surface and we have laid it flat since we've gotten it, it's warped which means that if you're playing with it on surfaces that aren't completely flat, like sand or grass, it's not really gonna be ideal. We'd benefit from seeing a slightly thicker shooting pad and also from perhaps a material that doesn't warp as easily as the one that they've used over here. But one thing I do like is the graphics that have been applied to this source game. It does look good. It's just a shame that the pad is a little bit too thin. 
Something else that HockeyShot have done to this particular shooting pad that I like is that it has beveled edges. So if you're trying to scoop the puck up on a hard surface similar to the one that we're on now, the beveled edge makes it very easy to scoop the puck onto the surface. And aside from that, the actual shooting pad or the quality of the shooting pad that HockeyShot have used doesn't match up or stand up to the same quality when we compare it to the one that Hockey Source Kit has or the one that the Source Toss has on my far right. Now when we move over onto the one from Gong Show, again, exactly the same system over here in terms of the net and the ramp as the other two that we've just looked at. But when we look at the shooting pad of this one, in my opinion, this is probably my least favorite one just based on the size. Aside from the actual thickness of this shooting pad being incredibly thin, so same issue as the one from Hockey Shot, it warps straight out of the pack, which is not ideal. The finish, the quality, even the attention to detail in terms of the handle around the pad for you to be able to hold the shooting pad to carry it around, you can see that it's just not made of the best quality when we compare it to the one from Source Kit and also the one from Source Toss. The actual dimensions of the shooting pad itself, it's incredibly narrow, it's very, very short, it's basically a tiny bit wider than the actual net itself. And although that's gonna be great for portability, so if you're carrying this thing around or you leave it maybe in the trunk of your car and you wanna move it around with you all the time, it's lightweight and it's portable, but the surface itself doesn't make for an optimal playing surface because you want somewhere to be able to put the pucks, you want a nice surface to be able to stick handle and shoot off of, and this one is just a bit too small. So it benefits you in portability, but in actually playing the game, it's a bit too small and restrictive and it warps. Now, when we look at Source Toss's version of the Source game, the first thing that you'll notice about this unit is that it doesn't use the same ramp and puck catcher system as the other games do. Source Toss have created a purpose-built larger net that attaches onto the corner of the shooting pad with a smaller net in the middle of the shooting pad. When we actually look at the shooting pad surface itself, it's the thickest of all of the shooting pads that we've seen from the other three versions, and it also features a handle very similar to the other versions that we've looked at. It doesn't feature beveled edges like Hockey Shot's pad for their Source game, which would be a nice addition to add, but the thickness of Source Toss's shooting pad is ideal to be able to play on a variety of surfaces. Even if you're on very, very uneven surfaces, kind of like what we're on right now, the pad still lies completely flat. Something else that's worth noting as well is because the net, both the larger one and the smaller one with Source Toss's Source game, attaches to the edge or the corner of the shooting pad surface itself, Although it's a very similar shooting pad surface size to the one from Hockey Source Kit, because the net, the larger one and also the smaller one, attaches to the edge of the surface itself, you have a much bigger surface to be able to stick handle and shoot the puck off of. So what are some of the other differences with these Source games? When we look at the ones that have the ramp system and the net, the whole puck catcher idea, is that these are incredibly versatile. They're very durable in terms of the actual ramp, the netting and the frame of the goal system itself. And we've seen a bunch of videos online of people doing some insane trick shots with them. These are very versatile and very portable products. But some of the things that you do have to consider, especially having had source kits and other versions of it for some time, is that there is a little bit of maintenance required to be able to look after these nets or the puck catchers that are used. The actual ramp itself, with it opening and closing, the bolts on the side do need to be retightened. There's been numerous occasions that we've lost a bolt or it's popped off while we've been using it. So that's something that you need to pay attention to to make sure that that doesn't happen happen to yourself. Aside from this, if you're using real pucks and the actual net or the puck catcher itself doesn't attach onto the surface that it's playing on, sometimes when you hit the ramp and the puck goes into the back of the net, the actual lid of the ramp can close on you, which can be quite frustrating. It's nice to see that Hockey Source Kit have addressed this by attaching their system onto the shooting pad itself, but if you're using just the nets and ramps themselves without the shooting pad surface, as we see a lot of people doing online, and the shooting pad surface and net don't connect to each other, you are gonna run into that problem of the ramp closing on you while you're using it. Now at the same time, when we look at the Hockey Source Toss, because it doesn't use any ramp systems like the other versions that we've looked at in front of us over here, you don't have to worry about that issue happening. There's also no bolts or screws that need to be maintained and tightened on Hockey Source Toss's version of the Source game when we compare it to the other ones that we've just looked at today in this video. But of course, a catch-22 is because Source Toss doesn't have a ramp and the whole puck catcher system, you can't use their game to be able to collect the pucks like you can with the other three Source games that we've looked at in this video. It is quite nice being able to store roughly about 40 pucks in these nets because you can carry them all in one, but whereas on Source Toss's version of the game, that doesn't exist because they're not using the puck catcher system. But I will mention that Hockey Source Toss do have a bag that you can pick up with their Source game for you to be able to store the actual nets and two shooting pads and also pucks.
Some of the other differences that are definitely worth covering is because Hockey Source Toss's version of the game has the larger net and the smaller net, they have a point system that's used to play this game. They actually have an entire rule set or a system of how you're supposed to play the game, which I will link down below because there's a lot of information to go into with that. But the larger net and the smaller net definitely make it a much more dynamic game than just having a ramp and a single net to be able to shoot into. You can do additional things like removing the larger net and only using the smaller net to be able to make it more challenging for more experienced or players that just want to push it a little bit while they're sourcing. So there's a lot of different elements that the source toss has over the other units. But at the same time saying that, one of the other benefits with having the puck catcher system with a shooting pad is if you remove the actual puck catcher from the shooting pad itself, you can use it for things like inline hockey. It makes a great net for pond hockey, which definitely gives it that edge over the source toss. But again, the idea behind this video is to show you the differences between these different games to figure out which one fits your needs the best. In terms of Source Toss's version of the Source games, I feel like theirs really does embody that whole beanbag toss game and also the cornhole game, just based on the fact that it has that larger net and the smaller net. It adds a more challenging aspect to being able to source the puck into two different nets with different point systems, rather than just sourcing a puck into a ramp and one single net. And an important point to mention is that if you're using real pucks or you're shooting the pucks quite hard, if the net and the ramp system over here with the puck catcher and the shooting pad aren't attached together, every time a puck hits the back of this smaller net with the ramps, the net shifts and moves, which is really frustrating. Now, after we've highlighted the major differences between these different games, what does the price of these games look like? Again, we'll start from my left and work my way to the right. The source kit version over here, that sits at, when this video was filmed, $160. Now when we move on to Hockey Shots version, that sits at $155. When we move on to Gong Show's version, that sits at $170. And lastly, Hockey Source Toss's version, which sits at $199. Now if I was to pick one of these four Source games based on my playing preference and what I prefer, because the Source Toss embodies the whole cornhole and also beanbag toss element with the larger net and the smaller net, and also the way it's been designed, I would personally go with that one. But if we were to look at ranking the other Source games in terms of the playability, the way that they've been constructed, and also the quality of the finish of the product, and the price, I would definitely put Source Kits above the other two versions. The reason for that, in my opinion, is because Source Kits version with their net and their shooting pad attached together, which makes a massive difference in how playable it is and how frustrating it would be otherwise if you were just shooting a puck into a puck catcher and it shifts every single time a puck hits it. I also really like the size of the surface and the quality of the shooting pad itself. From there, I'd move on to Hockey Shots version. Uh, the fact that their net, the ramp, and also the uh, board don't attach together, although it has those predefined holes, I'm not really sure what's up with that. If anyone can let me know in the comment section why that's been done, if you know, it'd be great to find out. But I do like the fact that it has the beveled edges, but the shooting pad is definitely way too thin and does warp. So that's why it falls second in terms of it falling underneath the Hockey Source Kit version. Now the last one is definitely going to be Gong Show's version. This is based on the finish of the actual shooting surface itself and also the size. It doesn't really have enough space for you to be able to stick handle properly and to be able to shoot comfortably off of. And the thinness of the shooting pad would also make it challenging to do on different surfaces like sand, grass or very uneven terrain like where we're at right now. As always guys, a big thank you for watching this video all the way to the end. There's a lot of different source games out there and at a very quick glance, they can all look very similar. So I wanted to create this share insight into what actually makes them different and unique and give that information to you guys. As always, thumbs up the video, subscribe so you can stay up to date with all of the videos that we post and all the things that you need to check out any of the products that we've discussed in this video or to see if they're available in your country will be down below in the video description. Leave any comments down below of which ones you think are your favorites. If you had to rank them one to four, which order would you put them in as one being the best, fourth being the least favorite. Subscribe, thumbs up, and take care till the next one. Peace.